Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter. This is video number 28 on covalent molecular solids. In the last video we looked at covalent networks and these were networks that were characterized by the fact that all of the atoms were joined together with strong covalent bonds. In a covalent molecular network it's slightly different because in a covalent molecular network we can see distinct molecules and these molecules are held together by weaker physical bonds and so we need to start kind of talking about um, the second of the types of bonds that actually hold uh, atoms together in a solid these are a little more difficult to think about anyway because with the possible exception of water um, most of these uh, substances that we don't tend to think about as solids we tend to think about them more as gases probably two of the exceptions to that are water water is a discrete molecule it's a combination of oxygen and hydrogen and one of the important things about this particular molecule is that there is polarity that is a slight negative charge on the oxygen and a slight positive charge on the hydrogen and this is the same for both bonds and as a consequence of that we have a net polarity in this particular molecule a, a positive and negative region now one of the important things that happens as a consequence of this is that molecules of water can be attracted to other water molecules a lot of other things as well but in the solid state so think about ice there will be a an electrostatic attraction that occurs between the negative region of the oxygen and the positive region of the hydrogen in fact what's going on here is a different type of um, bond it's the same type of attraction it's still an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged regions but because these are not ions there the attraction is more of a a weaker kind of a force in this particular case and we will have a look at these in a bit more detail later on this is a type of physical bond in this case called um, hydrogen bonding it makes the um, links between individual molecules quite strong and that's one of the reasons why um, ice has relative to a lot of other uh, covalent molecules quite a high boiling point but you can see that the key to this is that we have separate and discrete molecules but these molecules can attract one another in the solid phase another one that you may be familiar with is dry ice and dry ice is carbon dioxide so again it's something we have a little bit of experience of as a solid this time there are uh, a different type of intermolecular force and it, it's probably important to at this point just identify these key terms so the covalent bonds are the intramolecular bonds that is uh, sorry that is um, within molecules and the hydrogen bond that I looked at above a dipole dipole interaction or a dispersion force are all examples of these physical bonds these are all physical bonds and the way I've written them they get weaker as we go down this little list but it's these weak intermolecular forces that are holding the individual molecules to one another in the solid phase if the strength of those bonds is not high then only a small amount of energy will be required in order to break those bonds and move the molecules apart from one another Covalent bonds within the molecules are very strong so that's what we would need to break if we wanted to decompose the compound that is if we wanted a chemical reaction 
the intermolecular forces between the molecules are not as strong and so they're much more easily broken by heat energy causing the molecules to move around independently. And we'll have a look at what actually affects each of these. At the moment, um, I'm, I'm just going to leave some of these new terms for you because we will cover them in a little bit more detail later on. One of the consequences of um, the bonding that's present in covalent molecular solids is lower and often quite low melting and boiling points, uh, materials which are both soft and brittle and poor conductors of both electricity and heat in both the solid and the liquid state. Thanks for watching.